But I was curious. Deep inside, I was curious. I've never read it. And you know, so many people tell you, I don't read, I don't know, I don't believe, but they just never read it. You gotta open a book and read it before you say, I don't like it or I don't believe in what's inside. After what happened to her father, my mother had to immediately be taken to the south of France to hide on the farm until the end of the war. She did that and then she came back to Paris where she lived. But she realized, she was about 17 when she came back and she realized that for her, at least for her, God had died in the Holocaust. Her faith in anything was gone. She had a good reason. She basically was 15 when the Gestapo came to the house where she still lives in, in Paris, and snatched her father from in front of her eyes and took him away and then she didn't find out until much later that he died in Auschwitz. And that's why he never came back. In 1981, I came on my own, uh, came to California, and I was kind of excited because, you know, for a Frenchman, California, I was like, wow, you know, palm trees, the beach. And of course, I was thinking, you know, Californian girls, we always talk about Californian girls. Well, sure enough, on that trip, towards the end of my trip, I met this girl, Californian girl, and I fell in love with her. Beautiful girl, and uh, it was only 10 days, but I fell in love with her. I have to say, I was quite excited to introduce my French friends to this California girlfriend of mine. That was pretty cool for a Frenchman, to have a Californian girlfriend. We, uh, we spent some time together and eventually one day I told her, I said, listen, uh, I really think I want to marry you. And that's when she said, well, wait a minute. Uh, we can't do that. I'm a Christian and you're Jewish. We don't believe in the same, in the same thing. And I said, I don't care. We, you can believe in whatever you want. Let me believe in whatever I want. You love me, I love you. Let's just move on and stay together and get married. She wouldn't do that. At some point uh, in my late teens, uh, my sister had married this uh, um, religious Jewish man. And uh, uh, after becoming friendly, he asked me if I wanted to go with him and study the Torah and the Talmud and consider my Jewish roots a little, a little deeper. And I was attracted to that for a little while. I was, uh, because there was something, when you have Jewish blood, when you hear Yiddish, when you hear something Jewish, it always kind of touches you in a certain way. So I was attracted to that. Uh, but then, uh, having grown up in a very Jewish environment with Jewish family everywhere, I remember that what really bothered me is, in, 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 in a lot of cases, was some of the hypocrisy I saw. In, in the Jewish community, and I kept thinking of the time that we would go to synagogue for Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, uh, just to please the, the patriarch of the family. And so we'd be there, we'd give him a kiss and say, hey, we're here, you know, Hak uh, Sameach. And then we'd go outside and smoke cigarettes and look at the new cars that we bought, the new clothes. And I realized this is, this is not real. This is not about religion. This is not about God. The Bible was just God's book, a big book. It, it meant nothing to me. This is just about pretending, and I thought if I'm ever, ever gonna believe in God for anything, it's gotta be real. Whoever he is, it's gotta be real. It can't be hypocrisy. So I said no. I got this book from, uh, from Ellen, The Late Great Planet Earth, and uh, it was a book on prophecies, uh, and it was divided in two parts. The first, the, the prophecies of the Messiah when he came, and the prophecies of the Messiah when he's gonna come back. And it was a little, a little overwhelming for me, but they were very short, so I started reading, uh, this is what was prophesied in the Jewish Bible, and this is what happened. And I'm going like, wow, this, if this is really true, this is, this is kinda cool. Uh, and I would read this book on my way to work every day in Paris, uh, in the subway. And I think two or three times I actually missed my stop when I had stopped and I'm going like, oh my goodness, I had to get out and go on the other train and go back to my work and be late. It's at that time that things started to change. It really became more of a reality. And what was interesting to me, when I read the Bible, God's Word, it did nothing. But when a man in the book that he wrote gave me the same information, it was like relating a man to another man. I'm going, ah, oh, this guy believes that. I'm not alone. Maybe he's right. When I think of Jesus, when I thought of Jesus back then, to me, Jesus was a dead man on a cross. The statue you see in the Catholic Church. How many times I had been into a Catholic Church? Maybe a dozen times for special events for my friends. But there was no connection. Uh, I knew because in the family it was being told, Jesus is not for us. But because my entire family was non-religious, 
There was never any discussion of why he was not for us. I was just told early on, Jesus is not for the Jews. The first time I really understood who Jesus was, I realized that he was somebody who was completely innocent of anything, who paid the price for everything I've ever done. And that, that, that was hard for me to accept. He basically died for me. He said, you know what? I'll take care of it. You're innocent now. Whatever you did, it's gone. That was big. And to be honest with you, every morning when I get up, I'm going like, I can't believe you did that because I really don't deserve that. There was an increasing burden to both reach my people and study God's word. And uh, I was really interested in, 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 in finding out what God had to say. So eventually this led to uh, me deciding to go to uh, study for, to get a degree uh, at a Bible college in Jewish studies, to get a degree in Jewish studies. And I remember calling my dad after, it was probably like 10 years when I told him my involvement in the believing community. And every time I called him, there was a little more and a little more and a little more. Eventually I called him and said, Dad, I'm gonna go to a Bible college and get a degree, a Bible degree in Jewish studies. And my dad's reaction, he was not a believer, said, what's happened to you? Next time you call me, yeah, you're gonna be the Pope.